peekaboo. Ooh. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry, guys. My my dad instincts are were taken over. <laughs> I was uh, just sitting here ashore on my ho uh, horse contemplating what I should say as an epic intro speech for the new episode here on Hermitcraft. And then I realized, hmm, when I sit like this, those horse ears actually look like googly frog eyes. And then I think, hmm, that is pretty cool. Maybe we should rename Hermitcraft into Kermitcraft and yeah. There, there, and then I said, okay, press the record button or you will never get anything done today. <laughs> so, yeah, here we are. Um, we picked a spot, guys, um, in Spawn Town where things are absolutely taken off in a very crazy, insane pace, which I am still surprised about. I mean, I know the hermits are crazy and can build fast and do crazy projects, but boy, oh boy, <laughs> that break we had... It seems everybody has infinite energy and was hammering out crazy projects. Like Redden back there, you know, his giant windmill machine factory Giga Corp house, um, where he sells pie, the giant eagle that landed. And then we have Green here with his entity, which is quite ominous. That's his shop, the entity. Sounds ominous, I like it. And then, of course, you know, this giant tree Scar just hammered out seemingly overnight, which is completely insane. And now it also makes sense. Ah, why did he need a super hoe? Yes, indeed. And if you need so many leaves, I guess having a super hoe makes a lot of sense. And yeah, then there is... What is this even? You know... It's absolutely crazy. And yeah, hermits are kicking it off. And yeah, we have, you know... The Tower of the White Wizard back there. <laughs> Beat ups lives there. And uh, all over the place. And I was thinking, okay, okay, I've been stuck in this village for way too long. Did you get involved? I need to earn diamonds. Um, first trades have been made. Um, have a look at this. Well, looks like having books pays off already. I didn't want to have a bookshop going on. I wanted to leave that to other peeps, but look at that. <laughs> The book guy himself requested some mending. So here we go. The standard price, five diamonds per mending book. He wanted four. So I'm expecting 20 diamonds in return. Keralis can talk right now because... Yay! <laughs> First diamonds. <laughs> yay! <laughs> He's on a laptop in the kitchen having breakfast and grinding. So he can't use his mic. <laughs> But that was actually the first diamonds I got in the whole game. Never mind the thing. <laughs> right, you wanted books? Here. Yes, uh, I've heard you're a man of books. Fortune, unbreaking three, mending, efficiency oh five. My. Oh my, oh my goodness, what are you... This is, this is so nice. What do you want for these four books? I don't know. Like, the standard price for mending books at the beginning of the season kind of always been like five diamonds, I guess. Mm -hmm. <laughs> how about... You look very poor, by the way. <laughs> how about... <laughs> a beetroot seed. Uh, not too bad. You like it? Well, it's cool and all, but, you know... Look, I'll show you something. Yeah, check what. Look, this is oh. what Green paid me for just coming here and stocking himself up with all kinds of books. And <laughs> <I'm> <laughs> this is rubbish. Yeah, <laughs> I, I, I'm feeling people are ripping me off, man. Yeah, beetroot seed, beetroot seed, way better than. I'm gonna eat one of these salmons. Wow. Now there's less in the chest. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so you're poor, I, I, I assume, but, but you will get um, a lot of diamonds with that pickaxe you can make now, right? How about this? Mm. I shall top the chest with another chest on top. All right. Okay, check this out. Oh, 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 okay. Ah, uh, music is... Obviously invaluable. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Golden, <laughs> golden apples. And look at this. Mm -hmm. A, A door. door. Yep. <laughs> but can be used for anything you'd like. Hey, 
it's better than the salmon fisherman. Look at this chest. What is the oak doing in here? No, that's that's not where the deep is. Yeah, from. but it's not nowhere. Man, all right. Listen, you owe me then. Did you take the diamond back out? <laughs> <laughs> well, I shall if I owe you. <laughs> no, okay, okay. I shall, I shall take my beetroot seeds back. To no. be honest, I was a bit shocked that you accepted them. <laughs> all right. And then I'll pay you the five. That's all of the diamonds I have, and then the rest. That's fair. How about that? The other books are worth nothing, anyways. Right. Is but that a good deal? Yeah, that's that's absolutely fair deal. I mean, the mending, the mending, you know, that's that's the only thing hard to get. The rest is cheap, so I think that's a yes. very fair deal. Does enchanting is enchanting included in this price? <laughs> Do you have le no levels? Um, well, <laughs> I was gonna use them on other things. Do you have an enchantment table? No. <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I what? see you have killed a villager. Okay, I'm gonna name it to. All right, here. <laughs> mm. Do you have a specific order? Oh no. I don't have any iron. <laughs> <laughs> One minute. I'm I'm just trying to get by, dog. <laughs> I mean. I'm a simple man. <laughs> did you did you forget how to play Minecraft from all the mods you've been playing, huh? <laughs> no, but no. And and ha hey, what is? Look at what I'm paying. This is good payment. It's fair. It's fair. I'm not. It's all good. Better than green. <laughs> all right. Let me see. Um, where is your pick? Um, here. Mining fortune efficiency. Oh, already too expensive. All right. That's it. <laughs> I'm out of XP. Where yet? Here. Okay. What did we put on there? Rip off! <laughs> <laughs> how, how many levels is the efficiency? 12. Okay. Yeah, it's cool. I think there is. Uh, they yeah. have a um, skeleton spawner. Uh, where I have lives. levels. Oh. But I, but I, <laughs> I have to use. I have to use them on what? my gear first. What? I don't. <laughs> what? <laughs> it is the Here, biggest I'll, I'll, sweet, I'll sweeten the deal because of it. I'll oh, add yeah. a cooked salmon. <laughs> Thanks. That'll help. <laughs> if it at least would have been uncooked, then I could cook it and get the XP back. Oh, yeah. Well, it's cooked, so... Uh, all right. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much, Doc. You're welcome. Thank you. I don't know. I feel totally skimmed. But I think five diamonds is better than nothing. It's all right. And a door. Yeah. Gotta use one of the diamonds to make a music box now, I guess. Yes, true. <laughs> Very true. Get some tunes going. All right. All right. Later. See you later. <laughs> if that deal with Iska was not a rip-off, I've never seen one. I'm so bad at being a businessman. I need to really step up my businessman game this season. That's for sure. We need to make lots of diamonds. I heard Mumbo said he wants to be the richest hermit um, this season and ever. So we'll see about that. I have plans too to be very rich. Um, we'll see. <laughs> Anyways, um, to become rich you need to sell stuff here on Hermitcraft. That is the easiest route to lots of diamonds. So therefore we today need to open our shop house. Thing. I dug out a hole already and prepped some stuff and um, yeah the plan is we um, want to sell sand. You'll be asking yourself, really dog, sand? This is your way to riches? I think it is a smart plan. Sand is a long term commodity that will be needed now, later and ever. People want to make glass, people want to make concrete blocks, so if you provide lots of sand it's always gonna sell throughout the whole season. So that's the plan. And also right now of course all the other hermits would have serious problems transporting huge quantities of sand and actually selling them in their shops because, well, not too many people have shulker boxes yet. And even then, if you get shulker boxes, it gets very tedious, right? That goes for all hermits. Maybe not for me, though, because, you know, we have the poppy club. Poppy technology. <laughs> 
So, first rule of the Poppy Club, guys, and only rule, you don't talk about the Poppy Club, all right? <laughs> Anyways, we should get going here. Let's um, pick up these weird poppies here. And um, yeah, I'd say down the... Really, horse? Note to self, never try to pull a horse on a lead out of a hole. It builds up momentum and when it touches ground, it will instantly die. <laughs> Rest in peace, black fast horse without a name. You shall be remembered. I bred a mule from you. <laughs> Dang it. Oh no, now it's gonna be such a long walk home. <sighs> well, now you know why I needed a big hole in the ground. <laughs> to put a lot of chests and hoppers in that hole. This is the storage array for our sand collecting operation. Uh, should be able to hold uh, well over 200,000 items. So yeah, should be good on the storage <laughs> the storage space front, right? And yeah, now what we need to hook up on top of that thing is obviously something that fills this whole storage array. And that would be a six times hopper speed Super Sucker 9000 array. If you remember last season, you know what a Super Sucker 9000 is, right? And yeah, we're gonna use the Poppy uh, technology um, yeah, to connect uh, remotely to our sand collecting operation here and fill that storage really, really fast. Um, that design I'm gonna use is provided by Maddie. And Maddie is also the mad lad, Maddie the mad lad, um, hive mind <laughs> who found um, you know that uh, poppy technology if you know what I'm talking about works again right um, so yeah now the thing was let's play a fun game we thought um, yeah last time it was patched really quick let's see how quick Mojang is this time because I'm not gonna fully reveal how it is done <laughs> But, you know, of course, then um, we thought, yeah, it also sucks a bit for the viewers. They probably want to implement it in their worlds too and play with it. And eventually, of course, it is going to be revealed, right? At some point, it uh, will be revealed how it's fully done in vanilla. Until then, though, Maddie was nice enough to make a really cool mod um, that is a fabric uh, mod. Um, you just use fabric and then put the mod on. And in that mod, he implemented shadow block technology. Um, I will link that in the video description and, you know, if you want, in the meantime, you can use that. Eventually, um, you know, we'll share it. Maybe somebody else figures it out too. We shall see. Um, but until then, um, it shall remain a little bit of a mystery. And yeah, patch me if you can. I made a giant pile of sand here and I have four poppy stacks <laughs> in my inventory all right and yeah this is the setup here so we have three uh, inputs we have these two minecarts that are doing the sucking you can see one two three four hoppers and uh, the minecart is positioned perfectly on top of that four hoppers and then this one is setting on a double input so in total six times input so yeah let's open this bad boy and put one in here, move them with our number keys, and then we put another one here. All right. And last but not least, to activate the whole machine, we put another one here. Okay, perfect. You can see the stacks are synchronized. The stack in my inventory here drained in synchronization to this one. And if you look into the other minecarts, Ten. Ten. So that means we have one controller and uh, two sucker uh, sand. So now what we should do is, yeah, first of all, let's move that uh, to the number one slot. And then we should fill the rest of our inventory with other items we not want to collect. And where is my shovel? And now let's try it out. Let's shovel some sand. Oh, 
Oh yeah. I mean, this is as fast as you can pick up sand. You cannot pick it up any faster. And yeah, it worked. We drained our inventory, all the sand is gone and uh, should be in our storage system. So for all the new viewers, you know, that haven't watched last season, <laughs> guys, you know, you guys that have been here for many seasons, you're insiders, you know what's going on now. For all the new people here, hi, <laughs> they'll be like, what, what is, what, what is happening? Okay, let's, let's look down into our storage facility <coughs> and see if there's some sand somewhere. Oh, here we go. Here we go, here we go, here we go. That means all the channels are working. Oh man, I am pretty pleased. Okay, yeah, some sand is in there, that's that's all right. Yeah, it should be able to flow out. Wait, did I forget a hopper? A uh, lane of hoppers here? <coughs> oh no, I need to double check. Could be I forgot a lane of hoppers here. Uh, because this should not... Wait, oh, this is such a complicated system. Anyways, um, the transmission is successfully working. So now, of course, we have a little bit of an issue. Here, it worked just fine. Um, but my whole setup here is not in spawn chunks. And that is, of course, a problem, right? If I go further away, spawn chunks kind of end over there around the entity. right? If I go further away, this will not be loaded anymore and I cannot go to a desert thousands of blocks away and transmit all my sand to over here. Won't work. Well, that means we need chunk loading. Let me quickly try something here real quick. Did I desync it just now? We need uh, we need um, we need chunk loading, and yeah, there is a really cool way of doing chunk loading now. Let's see what happens if I pick that up. No, no, we're still synchronized. <laughs> um, still uses portals, but the setup is so simple. It's just mind-boggling. So, yeah, let me get ready to set that up and I'll show you. It's amazing. All right, let's take care of the chunk loading down here. So down in the basement, right, the storage setup is above us and we want to uh, do a portal chunk loader. So you start with a dispenser facing up and this is also a design Maddie showed me. Really cool, simple to build uh, portal chunk loader and a hopper facing into that dispenser. And then you have these two blocks here and um, what we want to do is now glitch a minecart, a hopper minecart better say, into this block here. And yeah, could be troublesome and this is also a cool trick you can use to do stuff like that. Um, look at this um, here, the rail bends like that and uh, continue it on top here, right? Um, I also want to add some stuff so the minecart stays in there. We need to have a stair facing this way and then another stair facing that way. And um, yeah, we waterlock that stair corner here. It's important because we're going to work with boats. So yeah, this is the setup. And now we want to get a hopper minecart stuck in there. So uh, we are able to suck up stuff that comes through the portal, namely boats later. So yeah, just put the minecart on there, give it a nice notch and it will perfectly sit in there if you do the rail setup like that. And yeah, that's the way you glitch stuff into blocks. Um, no messing about with pistons or anything like that and it's perfectly aligned and yeah we can already see it should have picked one of the tracks through the bed um, bedrock I'm saying obsidian there yeah and then of course you know our portal would go here then just basic portal shape and we can still use it later on um, next up we need a block here let's just use some stone it's all right um, put it up on there and we want to use a um, wooden pressure plate here and um, also a redstone torch right there and um, that will be used to trigger uh, the whole setup when the minecart comes out uh, minecarts i'm saying <laughs> so used to minecarts in these systems when the boat comes back and yeah this switch here on the side we can use to turn it on and off you can also hook one directly up but i want to have it in the wall later so i guess somewhere around here should be fine might have to move it a little bit again later we'll see all right and last thing you need to do is uh, load a boat into the dispenser and that's it that's the overworld setup the nether setup is nothing but fire one block of fire but yeah this is how it works um let's trigger it again boat 
would go through the portal, would get broken, come back, trigger. Yeah, you see, I can only demonstrate it when the portal on the other side is done. So yeah, let me quickly finish that one and then we go to the nether side and make sure this is positioned correctly uh, so no other hermits connect to it. All right, we are up and running. You can see some magic happening right there. Pretty much what happens is the boat comes back as entity, gets picked up by that hopper minecart right away, pushed into the dispenser, uh, which then gets triggered again by the pressure plate that is sitting up there with a little bit of delay because yeah, when the minecart gets placed here in the water, it gets placed a little bit upward. And uh, yeah, this way, uh, this is uh, creating this rotation. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's crazy what you can do in a simple, small setup like that. Now let's have a look on the other side. You might wonder, how does the other side look? Must be very complicated. Okay, let's look at the mechanics of the other side. This. <laughs> Just this fire there. And if you look at the <laughs> setup, what happens is the boat gets sent through, immediately touches the fire there, it gets burned up and it drops its entity and immediately gets uh, sent back through the portal. You see that? Boat comes, breaks. Comes, breaks, back. Comes, breaks, back. <laughs> oh, it's a tongue twister. See, and this is how we keep uh, sending items, uh, item loop going here for the for the whole deal, Leo. And this is how you can then have a portal junk loader going, as easy as can be. And yeah, if you want to switch it off, you know, you just flick the lever here, and now the boat will sit down there. And yeah, the whole junk loading setup is off. And yeah, to trigger it, trigger it again. <laughs> let's do this, and that's it absolutely insane and very easy to make and um, works like a charm <laughs> so now we should be able to remotely suck sand from everywhere all right i have the super sucker rigged again and now we can try it out you know with the portal loader so here you know you're sucking stuff up perfect all right um yeah let's go down and i saw something really cool not planned, I promise. Okay, chunk loading should be activated. We good. Yep. All right. Let's go through. <laughs> That's really a, a nice coincidence. So right here where my portal is, right? If we come down here, Pretty much here is the sign to Desert Mesa. So this leads to the mining desert. Let's see how far it is. I've never been there, um, but it should be a bit far further out. I have enough food. I brought one shovel for now for testing. Um, let's see. This way. All right. I'll make my way to the to the desert. Oh wow, okay, yeah, it is a super long walk. Okay, this will definitely be a good business. This is, yeah, this takes some time to run out here. <laughs> yeah, and I know roughly it was several thousand blocks away, the mining desert. Okay, here we are. This looks like a desert to me. Yeah, okay. Um, Let's eat and see what happens when we mine now. Fingers crossed, the stack is decreasing. <laughs> All right. Let's get to sand digging, shall we? <laughs> Yeah, okay, there is no way that you can break this and overload it or anything. You know, I'm trying my hardest. I was digging like an absolute madman. This whole giant area here. I mean, we got like tons and tons and tons of sand. 
and we can see my shovel almost broken so I shoveled for a ton of time but no matter what I threw at the system uh, you know like blocks stacks of blocks whatever it sucks it up like in an instant and yeah it's just uh, set up in a way that it is balancing out the player pickup speed like I cannot pick up blocks faster than the system sucks it out of my inventory right away and as you can see I didn't block any other inventory slot in my inventory everything gets sucked up by that one sand stack here I'm like <laughs> it's like it's insane right? the rest of your inventory stays clean nothing nothing uh, clutters it like it's completely you know awesome like I've never, <laughs> this is the most joyful sand digging I've ever done in my life, man. Poppy technology. <laughs> oh, it's so satisfying. You know, and I prepared three diamond shovels, mending shovels. And, you know, then I will just go, um, yeah, get villagers, you know, buy, uh, or buy some, some, XP bottles of my villagers and then I can go even longer and then I come on this insane intensive long-lasting mining sessions you know if you want to chill in Minecraft farming sand is the best thing ever and I can do it as long as I want well okay until I have 200,000 and my storage is filled but at this rate this won't even take that long I mean it's just yeah there is no way to break the system it is just amazing and we are thousands of blocks away from where the processing unit stands so that means the yeah portal loader we set up with the boat also works 100 percent reliable this is so cool <laughs> you know and i thought about something else so ah well why spoil the fun just keep on watching there's so many things i need to show you you have no idea oh still some sand to pick up all right, we're back. As you can see, our boat is still doing a thing. Nice, nice. Okay, let's check. Whoop. Don't walk into the fire. Hey. Are you here to check out the resources too? Okay, let's have a peek. Oh, baby. It worked. <laughs> oh, man. I'm so pleased. All right, let's quickly go up and let yeah, me just keep this thing here, chunk loaded, um, chest, right, and then we put the our super stack, the poppy stack into the chest here, still, you know, close by being loaded, and then uh, we should have no problem, so, whoop, we can pick it up later and it'll still work when I go on the big mining expedition. With all my pick, uh, with all my shovels I have prepared, oh, this was so satisfying here. Oh yeah! By the way, for instant mining sand, you only need efficiency three. Efficiency five is even overkill. But hey, if you make a shovel, you make a proper one, right? <laughs> hey, <laughs> why are you swimming? You can just walk because, on the water, you know. Oh, uh, all right, Mr. Hat, <laughs> look at you. You're looking very fancy. I'm meant to be the one who's the richest hermit on the Hermitcraft server, and then you're coming over here just literally icing up the place. Yeah. Like, you've got... <sighs> um, okay, we need to go to my place, though, to get the book. Okay, it's, it's, okay. Uh, we can go through the nether, though. All right. All right, that, that sounds good. Is this a farm that if I touch it, it will break? Okay, I'm just gonna. Yeah. No, nothing, nothing spectacular happening here. Oh, but this don't run into the fire. Fish going through. Oh, I'm on fire. <laughs> yeah, careful, careful. Nothing. What is happening there? N uh, nothing. Don't don't worry about it. All good. <laughs> okay, I I won't worry about it. I'm not okay, going to worry um, about it. Um, let I me am see. Slightly worried. All right, this way here. It's a bit precarious. Careful. Oop. I'm All being right. very careful. Yeah. Do we always have the worst nether spawn? <laughs> Don't we? It's like <laughs> it's madness. Look at it. It's this terrible. is quite intense. <laughs> yeah. Okay. It's gonna get more intense. If you hear gas, just keep on running. Okay. All right. <laughs> 
<laughs> I'll, I'll t Wait, this is going over the lava and you yes. built it out of netherrack? Was yes. this your idea? I, you know, quick and dirty in the beginning. Had no time. I thought you were a smart man. I had no time. Um, but yeah, every time I run over it, I, I think to myself, this is just the most stupid idea ever. And it is very stupid, Doc. This yeah. is the most stupid thing I've done this season so far, and I've done a lot of stupid stuff. It's safe, don't you worry. Like, as I said, if you hear gas, just run. <laughs> just run. <laughs> Alright. Ah. Okay. Alright, All right. Okay. here I'm we here. are. Let me see. We need mending book. Mending. <laughs> I might not be getting that bonus then. <laughs> no, no, all good. Um, so, do you need it for for pickaxe? A uh, pickaxe, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, what do you have on it? Uh, fortune, or is there anything on it already? Uh, it's it's fortune. It's unbreaking three. It's efficiency five. It's called the money maker. It's a it's a bit of a beastly pickaxe, as you can see. Oh, all right, okay. Yeah, then you don't need a bonus. <laughs> oh. <laughs> no! <laughs> oh. Well, Wait, I'm happy okay. with my mending book anyway. Okay, uh, but silk, a uh, silk touch bonus, all right. That's it. That's oh. silk oh, that, touch is good. always that'd good. That'd be good. Yeah, well, anyway. Just need to look for it. it. Must be somewhere. Sorry, it's a bit chaotic. There's no, no sense That's in this okay. madness. Ah, here, silk touch. I'm just gonna steal go. your anvil quickly. Yep. Here you go. Oh my goodness! This is this is a big moment. I just got myself my first proper pickaxe and nice, a silk man. touch book as well. <laughs> yes, this, this feels good. This so, feels good. Now we can take the safe route. It would be about a thousand blocks this way, or yeah, again, <laughs> the nether <nettle> bridge. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what to do because I've just got my perfect pickaxe. If I fall into the nether with this thing. I'm going to be quite upset, but I guess we'll go well, the dangerous route, I suppose. Yeah, it should be fine. If you hear a ghast, just run. Just just keep <laughs> running. Okay, that's like your catchphrase. All right. Yeah. Later. <laughs> See you later. All right. I started to build here now. And yeah, it's kind of an important build at the beginning of the season. Kind of defines the style we want to go with. And I have an idea for a style. How would I describe it? modern sandstone eco-architecture but you know about the real big plans for the absolutely mega giga kickback to the old school vibe ultra base <laughs> i want to build at some point um yeah, we'll talk about that a little bit more in the future episodes, but I have big, big plans and uh, I hope you will like it. But maybe already, if you can see here, the sandstone vibe, some of the old school people maybe know where we headed at, style-wise and big project-wise. So um, I added one more thing here because, yeah, this is going to have uh, an additional floor. On the top floor is going to be my living space and below is the shop. To get up and down, I want to have a bubble elevator here in the corner. So I created this bubble elevator switcherino thing. So the default state is magma block, that means down, down, down. And if you want to go up to the first uh, level, you press this button and we have the block switcher here. It holds the block for a while, long enough to get up. And then after a while, just switches back again. Uh, nothing too spectacular, uh, but uh, yeah, making such, such a block swapper in the corner is a bit challenging. Uh, most of them are in, on one axis, and this has two xi. <laughs> is it a word in English? Xi? Two axes. Is <laughs> What's the correct? Uh, who cares? You let me know in the comment section. So, um, yeah, the cool thing about this is though there is a cool delay circuit in I, you might be interested in. So you can see it's a minecart cobweb delay circuit. So to hold uh, for a few seconds, right, and give us enough time to swim up in the elevator, when we press here, this minecart gets pushed up into the cobweb and then takes a while hovers, 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 then falls down again on the wood pressure plate, triggers the whole setup again to switch back to the magma block. So that's really cool way. I mean, of course, you can do it more compact, but I thought, uh, you know, let's have some cool uh, mechanic here in the basement. And I think it's a really creative um, yet yeah, delay in timer setup. I'm pretty sure it uh, might be useful for you as well at some point. All right, I'm on my way to zero, zero again. I was reading through all the comments and yeah, thank you by the way guys, um, such amazing feedback and yeah, it means the world to me, I mean it's, yeah, 
always nervous, you know, if you pause the season and now we had a particularly long break. Yeah, and uh, then you're just concerned, um, you know, are people still there? Are they still liking what you do? Um, but yeah, looks good. <laughs> so yeah, lots of positive feedback. Um, of course, a lot of you guys commented about Poppy technology, right? <coughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> But also, quite a bunch of you commented about what was Doc doing at zero zero there with the turtle eggs. Well, I just came here because I have to. Um, normally, I wouldn't have to, but yeah. So I'm gonna reveal it to you guys. But hey, shh, don't mention it with the other hermits. All right. <laughs> so I actually pranked the whole server <laughs> globally. It worked partially. I got messages from some hermits asking me weird questions like, Doc, did you also see there's something strange with our zombies? Seems they form lines and track all into one direction. It's like, no clue what you're talking about. I must be tracking something. <laughs> so yeah, what happens if you put a turtle egg in any Minecraft world exactly at zero, zero, zero? Any zombie in the world, not only, you know, around the player he is standing, globally. So any zombie that is loaded by any other hermit will start tracking towards this egg, globally. So, you know, this could mess with all kinds of stuff, uh, mobbed farms and things. <laughs> so why do I say it was partially successful? Well, turns out, server restart... Oh, here we go. <laughs> Look at the zombies. <laughs> server restart uh, makes it so I have to come back here and load the area one more time. If the server would not restart every day, this would constantly work. I only realized after a few days that mm, something's weird. The zombie tracking ain't not... <laughs> Look at the Congo line back there. <laughs> zombie tracking ain't not working anymore. And then I realized, ah, okay, this must be the server restart. So now I'm thinking I will just hook up a tunnel from the nether to zero zero uh, because you are going via overworld. It's a pretty long journey. <laughs> so it's annoying to do it every day. But with a nether tunnel, I could just need to come here, step out real quick, reload the area. Don't even have to replace the egg. But yeah, this causes every zombie in the world to globally track towards zero zero. Let's see if we can spot a few more somewhere. He, this guy is also his arms out. You can see they're tracking something, right? When zombies have their arms raised, that means they're tracking. <laughs> uh, yep. This guy is tracking too. And they do it from all over globally. <laughs> so yeah, that was my start of the season beginner prank. As I said, semi-successful. Javin sent me a message on Discord, for example, asking if I know can explain what's going on here. <laughs> they immediately suspected me. How come? How come? All right, we made it back to spawn. And I'm laying out the bait a little bit. <laughs> hmm, Rendog is maybe onto something. Glitching toward a coordinate, maybe? Hmm, strange. <laughs> Nobody else said anything. Here, let's have a look. So we're under spawn that is 1,700 blocks away from zero, 00 and already we can see the zombie holding a torch here. Oh, he must have picked up a, a torch from another hermit cave in. He's tracking towards zero, zero. <laughs> <laughs> Country roads take me home to the place I belong, zero, zero. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, fight the water. You gotta get to zero, zero. <laughs> nice. It's working, so it's confirmed. They just have to go there, reload the area. Let's see if you can spot some more somewhere, somewhere right further up. <laughs> okay, here's a pretty big duck. <laughs> here's another one. Yes. Yeah, you wanna go to zero, zero? Uh, let's see how far you can make it. I think it should be this way. Yeah, there's another one <laughs> trying to get there. <laughs> oh, Minecraft, you beautiful, beautiful game. Why do you have so many awesome, 
box exploits, which I like to call features, you know. I mean, it's just glorious. You know, this could mess with <laughs> all kinds of mob farms. People have running, they're wondering why the zombies in their, draw, in their mob farms are fighting, fighting the current so hard or whatever. Like even he, he's probably tracking <laughs> whoever that is. Oh, I love it. Let's see if he, if he can spot another Congo line. Okay, mm. <laughs> down there. Look at like all the other mobs right there are not affected at all. They're just standing there, not tracking anything, not doing anything. So <laughs> it only affects the zombies, obviously. Maybe <laughs> this guy. Uh, uh, it's just too nice. <laughs> <laughs> Please, uh, that one Congo line was epic. Uh, yes, uh, I love it. Um, yeah, what else uh, do we love? Of course, building some stuff in Minecraft. And it was but time, you know, that we left the mark here at spawn 2. And yeah, here we go. That is my house and sand shop at the same time. <laughs> it has a lot of interesting shapes. And that's... The built theme kind of right modern sandstone eco architecture you can't say we didn't nail that it's very modern sandstone eco architecture we even have beehives i collected you know and organic we're producing our own honey here we got solar panels we got the nice uh, grass roof is so so cool you know i love just a combo of sandstone and greenish and wood tones like that i always loved it you know back in the world two days i was creating a whole world based on sandstone designs and yeah this is also gonna be a theme for the season last season we went with a very dark theme right and then scary creatures and um, this time i want to have a bit of a more homely and chill but still distinct style if you look at all the other buildings maybe ren has uh, some sort of a bit of a resembling style at least partially with his pie shop but you know uh, i really feel our building stands out style wise quite a bit and yeah i'm pleased about that obviously lots of terraforming needs to be done and then i want to build another thing where i'm standing there Maybe a cool greenhouse or something that could sell something else. And yeah, let's go for a little tour inside. Oh, it's getting nighttime. Wait, this might be a chance to see some more zombies. But yeah, chances are slim to no nothing that uh, nobody would sleep. We got a bunch of people on, but let's 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 have a look. Maybe we can see some zombies somewhere spawning out here in the woods, tracking. Everything is pretty well lit up already here around spawn. And with the new spawning conditions really requiring light level zero pretty much for mobs to be able to spawn um, yeah you definitely see less frequent mob invasions here in the spawn areas although the area around it is poorly lit still now unfortunately you cannot really see any mobs the huge caves obviously take up a lot of the of the spawn cap one thing I'm a little concerned a bit uh, about though, okay, it's night time, I mean, no bees would come out, but I definitely had nine bees buzzing about here, and uh, I hope they survived. You know, those bees are a bit derpy, they tend to get lost, or just simply suffocate. Okay, somebody's sleeping. Anyways, here's the plan. We have the main path here, and um, yeah, we can connect that already a little bit. I need to do some more you know setting up and stuff but uh, i think sh uh, our shop should be op open in uh, open in the next few days um so yeah here we're connecting right i mean speed is kind of of the essence we need to open up our shop rather quick so yeah i need to go refill all right so here we come and later on there will be a pass leading through here but, you know, you walk up and then here in those chests we will have them filled to the brim with sand. My plan was, as I know, um, you know, diamonds are not around inflationary yet. Um, probably have a mediocre price or a low price. I was thinking maybe um, eight stacks of sand for a diamond. I think that should be a fair price, is it? I mean, I'm going to try. 
maybe I have to lower the prices a little bit, but I think that's a fair price. And we're going for the long haul with this one, you know, sand will always be needed. So here will be the shop area, obviously I will decorate it out a little bit more. Here we will have an ender chest and yeah, signs and stuff, right? And yeah, that's the lower floor, that's for the customers. Then they can also come out here. Have a beautiful view on the entity or the giant eagle. I think we picked a prime spot here pretty much at the heart of the city, right? Overlooking everything pretty much. And yeah, we're sitting right there across the, the entity. And I'm planning to build a bridge connection to over there to the entity. I need to talk to Green, you know, I mean, it's his build site there. So I don't know what plans he has for bridges. Maybe we can collab on that. And the bridge would come over here and then just lead along and go beneath uh, this arc here, right? Which is a cool view up, I feel. Looks really nice with the organic um, vibe going on and uh, some beehive. Hopefully the bees are still alive. If not, hey, why are you... What did I do to you now? That's better. Are you kidding me? Okay. Yeah, mind controlling mobs, quite interesting feature. Um, yeah, uh, wh wh where was I? Um, oh yeah, it looks super organic and nice. And um, yeah, I love it. Nice flow here. And as I said, through the arc here, we will lead on the path and connect it. Uh, so you have a cool vibe when you come through here and be like, ooh, what's going on? Wow, wow, wow. There must be sand sold in this amazing building. <laughs> Okay, let's go upstairs. So here's the elevator, right? We press and then our cobweb delay timer. Oh, I think I killed the water source up here. Yeah, I did. With my stupid shoes. Yeah, those shoes are not really... Wait. <laughs> we, need to, we need to pick up a bucket of water. While I was building, I broke a water source. <laughs> oh and pick up all right let's put that back in okay now we're good all right welcome to my humble starter abode once again a beautiful you know big balcony i just love balconies and they just add so much to to a building and i really like the floor design here you know just using these trap doors and then um, carpet moss carpet on top a nice sunroof kind of using the same technique and yeah i wanted to have this warm and friendly vibe nice you know you want to sit out here on the balcony like for real <coughs> and just chill you know watch over the, the horizon see beat up this epic tower um, have some passer buyers hey how you doing you know that feels really homely and neighborly. That's the whole vibe of this whole season, man. Like having a starter village together like that, it feels right, man. It's just cool. So you want to have lots of balconies to, you know, see whatever is going on around you and maybe being able to interact with everybody here. Huge window there. And also big windows here to see what's going on. Oh, wow. Giant tree. You know, then some storage uh, things. I haven't filled stuff in there, uh, but I have to clean up my build site, so I will move some stuff up here. And the chest, of course, a little furnace, some more storage. And then here, my chill bedroom. Ah, with a nice Celia bush and a nice view out on the bay. You know, when you sl here you're sleeping soundly, I tell you. Curtains going on. Some roots growing through, you know, we're organic. <laughs> ah, I just I just love everything around here. <coughs> Separating the room a little bit. Um, light, almost a bit of an Asian flair whenever I see these trapdoors, right? Um, Japanese room separation style, kind of. Yeah, but really loving this build. Um, worked on it with Jeromus, which I always do, hanging out in the evening hours. Jeromus is working on his master's thesis right now. And to relax, you know. We built some cool stuff together in Minecraft. And yeah, it was really enjoyable. But yeah, as I said... Oh, did I just see a bee? Man, you know, it would have a way more organic v uh, vibe if we had more bees buzzing about. That's that's kind of missing. So yeah, I hope... <laughs> I hope those bees show up again. Man. 
And there's lots of flowers around here too. I mean, bees might be tempted to get lost out here. You can get stuck everywhere. Free flying bees, man. Mojang, come on. Look into the bee pathfinding maybe a little bit again. That would be really cool. Anyways, guys, I'd say we call it a wrap for today. I'm gonna go out into the desert and make sure our uh, shop is fully stocked. And yeah, I also wanna <laughs> Uh, show you that uh, you know even the goat is sometimes really stupid well obviously you know I wanted to show you uh, my cool new horns on my skin and really struggled last time and then people saying <laughs> funny how dog struggled to show his goat horns when he has free cam and can literally fly up to his own skin and look at it in detail yeah <laughs> uh. so here those are the goat horns. Now you can see them in full glory. Natural horn, cybernetic horn, right? With more of a metal shading. <laughs> and the crocs. <laughs> oh man. So yeah, thank you so much guys for watching. And maybe, you know, you guys can participate in our small little global prank here a little bit. You know, maybe on some other hermits you watch, leave a comment along the line of, hmm, weird did you see what that zombie was doing back there you know lead them on a bit i need your help there as uh, yeah it kind of failed as it was disabled for a few days and nobody really realized don't know how much people are going caving right now anymore you know what i mean <laughs> so yeah give me feedback about our build style organic eco whoa sand madness <laughs> and um whoa i completely uh lost control of the camera here and with that said <laughs> thank you so much and yeah next episode got some cool plans again bye, bye.